So I think that most of my longtime viewers know that when it comes to pop culture topics, I'm pretty illiterate. In fact, I would argue that I'm totally clueless most of the time. However, when it comes to this particular celebrity that we're going to be talking about today, I actually do have some insight because I used to consider myself, surprisingly, a pretty big fan of Russell Brand. I love his movies. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek is probably one of my favorite movies ever. And I actually used to watch his YouTube videos all the time. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he talked about. Some of his views were more unorthodox. He would talk about spirituality, which doesn't resonate with me, but he was solidly left-leaning, at least when I watched him. But eventually, I stopped watching his YouTube channel, not necessarily for any particular reason, just because I kind of lost interest. But now, I've learned that he may have taken a very, very bad turn. To the right, at least according to this article published in the Daily Beast, titled Comedian Russell Brand Has Become a Powerful Voice for Anti-Vaxxers. And the subtitle reads, The comedian seems to have found a loyal fan base in conservatives and anti-vaxxers who have flocked to his YouTube and Facebook accounts for his rambling vaccine skeptic views. So after not watching his content for years, I will admit it's a little bit heartbreaking to see him take this turn. And I have read through this article already, obviously, in preparation for this video, and I do have some disagreements with the concerns raised by the author here. Having said that, though, when you actually look at his channel, there's a lot left to be desired, to say the least, if I'm being incredibly charitable. And we'll look at his YouTube channel, but first I want to get to the arguments presented by the author in this article. So she writes, The forgetting Sarah Marshall actor has always presented himself as a contrarian, a free thinker, who isn't afraid to challenge established views or spout off at the government both UK and US. But recently, Brand, who has always seemed to skew left in his political beliefs, has found a loyal fan base in right-wing conservatives and anti-vaxxers who have flocked to his YouTube and Facebook accounts, hailing the 46-year-old as a so-called voice of reason. He's played heavy to this fan base, interviewing right-wing trolls Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens, although he does disagree with them on certain points. In June, he asked his watchers if he should accept Fox News' invitation to appear on the network. Most agreed he should. I would suggest Tucker. He's very fair, one fan and commented. The titles of his videos are often designed to delight or infuriate depending on the viewer's political stance, leaning heavily on incredulous clickbait titles such as Thought Biden Couldn't Sink Any Lower? Think Again. Did Liberals Use Feminism to Justify Afghanistan Clusterfuck? Shocking. Wuhan Evidence. Did Fauci Lie? And So Trump Was Right About Clinton and Russia. But for the past few weeks, Brand has taken issue with the vaccine, casting doubt on the trustworthiness of the FDA, asked Asking if vaccine mandates are an assault on people's bodily freedoms, calling the vaccine a gold rush, and pondering whether people could trust Bill Gates. Most recently, Brand declared that there was a vaccine apartheid going after CNN anchor Don Lemon after he called out people who refused to get vaccinated. While these videos don't necessarily flop, Brand only recently found his core viewership when he began discussing COVID-19 and political hot topics after Donald Trump left office. So I'll explain to you some of the objections that I take with the author's argument here, but just that last paragraph, it really says a lot. It speaks to a phenomenon known as audience capture, which is when you have this YouTube channel, you've had it for a really long time, and all of a sudden you post a video that gets lots and lots of views. It just inexplicably blows up. So then you see the positive feedback, you do it again, and the same result happens. So you enter this sort of feedback loop where you give your audience something that they want, and in return, they reward you with views, clicks, and engagement, which is everything on YouTube. The issue with audience capture and the issue with this feedback loop in, in general is that you, in the long term, ultimately cultivate this audience that expects you to give them a particular thing, and the more you do it, the more difficult it is to break out of that cycle, and that's an issue. Having said that, though, I don't agree with all of the points made by the author. Um, Bill Gates is a trash person who's untrustworthy. I think that you can be pro-vaccine and also hate Bill Gates and think that he's a scumbag, especially if you are pro-vaccine because he doesn't want to release the uh, patents for the COVID-19 vaccines so developing countries can manufacture their own versions, uh, generic versions of the COVID-19 vaccines. So I don't take issue with that. The clickbait titles, I mean, this is something that we're all guilty of on YouTube. 
it's just part of the game. I don't blame him for that. A lot of the topics I, I don't really find interesting, but it's general anti-establishment type of topics that he talks about. On top of that, when it comes to him platforming people like Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, I don't really care if he is in fact challenging them, which the author does say that he does. Now, some of the portions of this article that I actually take issue with and disagree with is how they pick out certain comments and they essentially attribute these bad comments to Russell Brand. Now, I will say that you can kind of get a sense of what the creator talks about pretty frequently by gauging the audience and, and how they talk about things. So it can be useful, but the couple of anecdotes here, it's not sufficient to lead me to believe that he is as bad as the author is implying, at least just by reading this. But there's a big but here. If you look at his YouTube channel, um, it does point to a really, really bad trend. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things in here that give me Dave Rubin vibes, to say the least. Now, this is a sample of videos that he posted from the last month, and some of these titles were actually named in the article. But I mean, just right off the bat, you can see how clearly all of his videos overall are skewed towards the right, just based on the titles alone. That doesn't mean that all of his videos are bad, but just overall, I mean, what is the message that you think he's sending? Who do you think he's appealing to based on this superficial glance so far at his video titles? So, I mean, look at this one. Joe Rogan and Ivermectin. Should COVID be politicized? Well, no, it shouldn't be politicized, obviously, but this title suggests that Joe Rogan isn't the one who's politicizing the pandemic by making his refusal to get vaccinated about freedom and by opting for alternative treatments that haven't been proven to actually be successful at treating COVID-19 like ivermectin. So who's the one that's politicizing it? I mean, that's left up to interpretation, but if you look at all of his videos in some... I mean, I think you kind of get a sense. Let's look at some of these titles here. Is the vaccine an assault on your bodily autonomy? Question mark. Mm, no. Can we really trust vaccine fact checkers? COVID and health. Why can't we talk about the science? This is why you can't trust Big Pharma. And you see the FDA logo right there implying that maybe the emergency authorization isn't sufficient enough for us to trust it because you see some sort of a pay to play thing going on on the you know that thumbnail so without even clicking a single video just by browsing his catalog you can easily deduce that he's appealing to one particular crowd of people anti-vaxxers by looking at all of these titles if you step back in some you kind of put them together like pieces to the puzzle when you see the complete puzzle there's this tacit implication that maybe the vaccines are bad. If the FDA is lying to me and COVID-19 is being politicized and Fauci is lying, maybe the vaccines are bad. Now, he doesn't explicitly say that, so he does give himself plausible deniability. Having said that, though, when you actually watch the videos, which I have a couple that we're, we're going to take a look at here, He's not doing himself any justice here. So take a look at Exhibit A. This is the video titled, uh, Are Vaccine Mandates an Assault on Your Bodily Freedom? Vaccines are now being mandated for businesses with more than 100 employees. This is going to affect 80 million American people. Is this an intrusion on your rights? Do you trust your government to have that amount of authority? Are these necessary measures or is this situation being mobilized for political ends? Now, as ever, when talking about this subject, it's necessary for me to express my neutrality. I am Switzerland when it comes to this subject. No view at all. I am merely a floating series of molecules, spores in space that, through the spike protein, could attach to something. Now, I'm completely neutral. Let's see what this uh, New York Times journalist, Robbie Sove, had to say. In December 2020, the prospect of imminent mass vaccination against COVID-19 was becoming a reality and Biden said he would not force anyone to get the jab. No, I don't think it should be mandatory, he told reporters. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. So Biden, however you see Biden, and increasingly post-Afghan war withdrawal situation, he is receiving a little more criticism even from his traditional supporters, is changing. We're seeing that ordinary process, campaign promises, what takes place in action. You know what my position is. This is an area where I can declare what I feel. I'm neither left nor right. 
because I don't believe in centralised bipartisan democracy. So I'm not a socialist or a Marxist. I agree with kindness, compassion, sharing, service, supporting one another. And I can talk about the administrative underwriting of those emotions because all governmental systems are ultimately leaning into an emotion somewhere along the line. They have to, because otherwise, you know, what is humanitarianism? Why protect human beings at all? So just by watching that short clip, you kind of get a sense of what he's doing here. He's not explicitly saying that vaccine mandates are an assault on your freedom. He's not saying that vaccines are bad, but he kind of gets you to think about these things. He gets you to a certain conclusion by using innuendo and priming. And I think it's really slimy, especially because you can see what he was doing there. He was presenting himself as an enlightened centrist. I'm not left. I'm not right. I'm perfectly neutral, except no, you're not. You can try to pretend to be neutral, but when we look at your video catalog and in particular your titles, you're very clearly creating this content for one particular group of people. Uh, and when you title a video, vaccine mandates an assault on your bodily freedom, and the entire setup is that Biden went back on his promise. I mean, even if you don't explicitly say that vaccine mandates are indeed an assault on bodily autonomy, who is this supposed to appeal to? And the person who you're obviously appealing to, what do you think their conclusion is going to be when you present them with this question. I think it's pretty obvious what he's doing. Now, let's go to another uh, video. I present you with Exhibit B. The left versus right culture war conflagration continues to increase in temperature and many people are asking, are we on the brink of civil war? Well, Tim Poole, when I spoke to him on my podcast, Under the Skin, available from Luminary, you can get it on Apple, link in the description, says we're already in a war. The war has begun. It's just being practiced on the level of psyche. We're in the middle of a psychological war being subtly fought through media and sometimes not so subtly fought. An invasion of the mind. Policemen of the brain. Tim Pool is a great and influential orator. Have a look at this clip from Under the Skin. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Stay to the very end because some interesting points are made. Uh, actually, there's a story right now. A journalist was attacked by anti-fascists in, I believe it was in Portland. There's a video of it. You can actually watch the video of them calling her a slut, shoving her to the ground, spraying her with paint and, and, and macing her. And right now, if you go on Twitter, all of left Twitter says it was actually the Proud Boys. They are, they are so tribalist on, on, on their worldview, they will not accept fault for their own side. And Obviously, I think the right has its faults. I think the Proud Boys who show up to fight are causing, you know, equal trouble to a certain degree. And people have just, they have their sides. They, they want to fight. They're, they're not interested in what is true. They're interested in what they believe. And they're interested in confirmation bias. I think when independent voters start swinging away from Biden, which they are, and they might vote for Republicans, which I don't necessarily think solves any of the problems, you'll end up with a massive reaction on a scale much worse than we saw in 2020 with the riots. Because people are entrenched. You know, they don't want to back down from what they believe to be true or their worldview. And I think uh, uh, just one final thought on this, a simple way to explain the difference. I do not think you will ever see uh, a large movement of Trump supporters embracing critical race applied principles, uh, critical race praxis. You will see that, uh, you know, the, the left will obviously be very much in favor of their vision of equity and equal outcomes and, um, you know, racial quotas. The right won't do that. And so long as you have two governments, uh, uh, you know, fighting over control of one centralized system where they want to implement their moral framework, I think it ultimately ends up with some kind of implosion. So ask yourself, who is this for? Is this for left wingers? You have Tim Pool here attacking the left, saying that they're as bad as Proud Boys and that they're tribalistic and they're very biased. And the right has their problems too, but I mean the left. Let me tell you about the left with their critical race theory peddling uh, nonsense racial quotas. Who is this for? Come on. This isn't for left-wingers. This is for right-wingers. Right-wingers who are tuning in because now they realize that Russell Brand is going to tell them exactly what they want to hear. He's going to reinforce their worldviews. And maybe he doesn't reinforce their worldviews explicitly, but he gives them enough, presents them with enough information to where they can make their own decision, even though they've kind of been led to that particular place.
Now, one last clip that I want to show you. This is from the Nicki Minaj COVID vaccine testicle discourse that I thankfully missed uh, when it was taking place. Take a look. Nicki Minaj is there to have an opinion on a controversial subject and is now getting the ire of the government and commentators everywhere. Should public figures and celebrities and that be able to say stuff or is it irresponsible and should it be stamped out or does it depend if they're parroting your perspective or not? Let's work it out right now. And became impotent after getting the COVID jab. Also, like this news is framing it as a series of anti-vax tweets, i.e. it belongs to a genre, which I think is a little unfair because there's some of the most personal and particular information I've ever read in text form. I should clarify at this point that I have no opinion on any medical crisis or pandemic treatment of what you should do as an individual or any opinions about anything. See me as sort of like a glass sphere floated through space that information just goes through. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision and not bullied. Now that suggests that Nicki Minaj's general view is that it should be an individual choice made by uh, each of us individually. Cool Nicki Minaj. I guess it's like Nicki Minaj is being utilised by any side on this argument. People that are circumspect, hesitant, cynical about the vax, concerned about the reporting of anomalies will think, ah, oh, Nicki Minaj freedom fighter. People that are like, no, just get vaccinated. This is an unprecedented crisis. Nicki Minaj, she stepped out of line. If a celebrity says something that's a bit mad, they're a celebrity. And if you agree with them, cool, you, you're into them and you like them. If you disagree with them, well, well you know, they're a celebrity. Right? Everyone gets all serious. Oh no, but with your platform, with your platform, you should be saying what I would say if I had your platform. That's not how reality works. People are all different. No, see that right there is what I take issue with. Using your platform responsibly doesn't mean that you can't share your own opinions, even if they're spicy. But using your platform responsibly means that you very clearly differentiate between what are facts and opinion. If I say it's my opinion and people know it's my opinion, no harm, no foul. But what Nicki Minaj did there is she didn't just dare to share her bold opinion. She presented an anecdote and made it seem as if this is some widespread phenomenon. She implied that there's a cause and effect relationship between the vaccines and impotency. That's not her just sharing her opinion. That's her sharing incorrect facts or what people will perceive to be facts about the COVID-19 vaccines that may persuade people to not get the vaccines themselves. And what we know so far based on facts is that the vaccines have saved hundreds of thousands of lives. So by her saying that, Having one of her impressionable fans view that, they might think, wow, well, I don't want my, my testicles to swell up. I guess I should probably avoid getting the vaccine. That's dangerous. And again, he presented himself as a neutral arbiter of information here. But when you look at his channel, he's obviously deliberately trying to appeal to a very specific group of people. So I find it especially disingenuous and slimy if you're going to clearly pander to anti-vaxxers. That's what he's doing. Come on but yet still claim, oh, well, I'm neutral. Mm, no, you're not. You're, you're pretty clearly taking a position. You don't have to take a position explicitly. To take a position, you, you can take a position implicitly. You can say things without saying them directly. And that's what he's doing here. It's pretty obvious. So I've seen enough. This is um not good, Russell Brand. I mean, I'm not going to say that... He's as bad as Tucker Carlson or even Jimmy Dore for that matter. And I don't agree with all of the points of contention in the article. But I mean, he's undeniably a powerful voice for anti-vaxxers, given how big his platform is at this point and how famous he is. And even if it could be a lot worse than I was expecting after having read that article, it's still not helping us during a public health crisis. This isn't helpful. You're pandering to anti-vaxxers. He knows it. He could be in denial, but this is the result of audience capture, and it's bad overall. You're not helping us get the virus under control by implicitly discouraging people to take the vaccine. And during a public health crisis, I, I just I don't appreciate that. And I find it especially gross when you very clearly present a particular skewed image to people and a narrative to people, but yet you claim that you're just some neutral arbiter who's sitting in the middle you're not taking a stand. You're not left. You're not right. You're totally above the frame. No, you're not. You're now functionally in the camp of right-wingers, at least on this issue. And 
it's not a good look. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.